essential members of the Commonwealth, and uh, as the Commonwealth forces also played tremendous role uh, under uh, the uh, serving of Sir Winston Churchill, I'm now going to ask Lord Gurban to say a few words uh, on Winston Churchill, <coughs> and particularly Winston Churchill's uh, favorite uh, uh, personalities, which were the soldiers from around the world, and we will ask him to talk about the British Indian Thank you, Shalala Hayat. I'm uh, grateful uh, for you to give me this opportunity. Uh, I have to say that um, uh, I haven't studied um, Sir Winston Churchill in detail, uh, but however, I do know and have huge respect for him as uh, our Prime Minister, who led us to victory during the Second World War, and the nation uh, obviously remembers him. Uh, in that way, and uh, he's highly respected right across the parties uh, for his uh, leadership during uh, the, the, during the war. Um, and uh, I certainly uh, have a, a huge respect for him. Uh, everybody else has. The only thing I'm not sure whether he was sure either whether he was a liberal or a Tory, but <laughs> he was switching from one side to the other uh, once or twice in his life. But um, uh, but I have to say that with regard to uh, those who fought uh, for our nation uh, in Allied forces, um, I think the Indian Army played a huge role. Um, I'm led to believe that uh, more or less 2.5 million <coughs> Indian volunteers uh, took part in that um, in that uh, war, defending uh, our country and. I um, also am aware that out of that 2.5 million, one third at least was of Muslim faith. Um, and uh, also, uh, I read in the history books that uh, the princely states of India also offered some support. And Ally happened to have born in a princely state, and I studied about that, um, and I read that um, the Maharaja of Kashmir, uh, that's where I was born, also sent uh, his um, uh, soldiers to support. And may I just um, share with you that from those men and women who gave lives in the Second World War, one of them was my real uncle elder brother of my father, who gave his life in Burma. Um, the, he left home uh, just uh, in, in late 1939, uh, came back only once, and then soon after his departure, uh, there was no contact uh, with him until the end of the war. During that time, the army uh, people were asking and making inquiries from home because he had disappeared. Uh, in fact, at the end of the war, it came as though he was taken prisoner. And uh, then when we, uh, when our forces took the area back in that uh, uh, fight, uh, he uh, in his life and his uh, remains were discovered and his remains, uh, he's mentioned in the memorial garden in, in, in Rangoon. Um, we didn't, well, the, the, the family came to know in late 1940s that he was actually killed, and his widow uh, was informed. Um, but my father, who is 90 now, uh, has lived in the UK since 1950s. Um, when uh, he was told, well, he wasn't, we were not aware of his uh, grave or his, uh, his, uh, his uh, uh, remains or whatever. My younger brother searched him on the internet in 2001 uh, that his remains are buried in Rangoon. And my father asked me, he was very emotional about it. He says, I want to visit uh, my brother's grave. So I accompanied him. To Rangoon, uh, to, and they 
when uh, visited the, uh, the cemetery there, and the address that we downloaded from the uh, from the internet, uh, one of the guys uh, who worked, he was the manager of the cemetery came to us. He said, "What are you looking for?" I gave him that. He said, "Actually, it's not a grave. His name is on the panel of, of the remember scarlet." So he took us straight there, and yes, we saw Mr. Aladita, uh, son of uh, you know, uh, whatever, and from, uh, and that's and then we stayed there uh, for a week because. The flight is only a week, a weekly flight to Silver Moon. Um, but that's a little story to say that um, people from Kashmir also gave lives in the, during the Second World War. It's only pity that sometimes we forget our friends. Um, those who have fought for this country in difficult times. Uh, I might just say, make a passing remark that uh, uh, Britain has forgotten Kashmiris. That's a sad state of affairs. But never mind that we're not talking about that at this minute. But uh, maybe at some point we want to uh, recognize that the Kashmiris uh, actually gave lives for Britain in the First World War as well as the Second World War, too. Uh, just as the Indian Muslims uh, and other Indians did. And I think it was um, mentioned by your lordship. Um, uh, and, and it is in the history books that uh, when the war broke out, Indian National Congress, uh, led by Gandhi G, actually um, did not support the war, uh, whereas Muslim League, uh, under the leadership of Mohammed Ali Jinnah, uh, they supported the government and uh, asked for the Muslims to take part and defend uh, the Kremlin. And that is another uh, sign that we need not to forget. Uh, historically, Pakistan, before it became independent, um, the Pakistani nation, the, uh, uh, the father of the nation, was a true friend of Britain, and we mustn't forget that. Okay. Thank you very much. My Lord Kuban, thank you very much for that wonderful um, the history taking us from European side to the other side, um, and representing here as a group as and we are still members of the Commonwealth. It now gives me a great honor and privilege to ask the next gentleman who represents a diverse community in his area and uh, <coughs> he will understand better from his experiences, from his four parents and families, of course as a parliamentarian and a lot of Commonwealth uh, members of the community are in his constituent. It gives me great pleasure to ask Richard Harrington MP to say a few words. Thank you. There will be a few words. <laughs> I can't really follow the erudition of Lord Guthrie, or indeed uh, Lord Howe, or yourself, Lord Guthrie. I'd like to say that I would like to endorse what you said about the Kashmiris, because I know quite a few Kashmiris in my constituency whose parents or now grandparents fight in the Second World War. In fact, it was often said that because of general support for, um, for Britain through the Muslim Council and everything like that, that was one of the reasons that um, in, when everything happened so quickly after the Second World War, um, that the British government were very well disposed towards his arguments about Pakistan. Unfortunately, that didn't help the Kashmiris. No. But it should, it should be noted. Well, um, Lord Guthrie, all I can say is my family, my father was very proud of the fact that no one in our family has ever reached beyond the rank of private. However, um, he was, my father was, I uh, was a reason to do with church to tell you this, but my, my late father was in the uh, aid army in, in the war until he was badly injured by a shell and spent eight months in hospital. And my uncle, who kept very quiet about it, served three, um, uh, three tours as a rear gunner in Lancaster. So, uh, but my father, uh, very proud of the lack of rank that anybody was ever given in my family. But the reason I mention this is because I spoke, because I was studying history at school, etc. I spoke quite a lot to them both 